autoimmune encephalitis is a condition where uh, the body's immune system starts attacking Uh, the brain causing inflammation of the brain causing encephalopathy or confusion along with other features like seizures and other manifestations um it used to be considered a rare disease disorder but over time we have realized that it was not as uncommon as once considered in the presentation i'll be including some epidemiology data suggesting at least uh, in a study done in olmsted county minnesota we compared uh, incidence and prevalence of autoimmune encephalitis and to our surprise it was as common as known infectious encephalitis so i think with discovery and use of more of these antibodies uh, we've been uh, we've been able to diagnose this condition in a much better manner and we able to identify many more of these patients we are also learning about how this disease process actually happens there is a subset of patients who have autoimmune encephalitis secondary to antibodies which are directly pathogenic and cause the disorder a good example of that would be nmda receptor encephalitis or lgi1 and there are others where we now have good data to suggest the antibody itself is just a biomarker and the disease process is being caused by a t cell mediated response against the protein to which the antibody is made a good example of that is a new syndrome which i'll be t- talking about uh, called as kelch like protein 11 encephalitis it is a syndrome that we dis- uh, described here in collaboration with ucsf uh, among patient who which happens among patients with uh, testicular cancer or seminoma and um, using some flow cytometry based assays we were able to demonstrate that it's actually the t cell uh, mediated disease or t cell driven disease so i think as we learn and understand about this condition i think we're we we're more comfortable in diagnosing and managing these conditions over time